Hello everyone and welcome back to today's analysis. Now for the 51st episode I'm going to analyze none other than Rick Sanchez, one of the titular main protagonists of Rick and Morty. This episode is another special episode to me, as Rick Sanchez is my favorite hero, or anti-hero better yet, in animation, wherever it's a key show or adult swim, as the amount of power, intelligence, and symbolism, and even the realism behind his character are absolutely genius and terrifying at the same time. And maybe I'm bored with my statements again, it's simply my belief that Rick Sanchez is the greatest protagonist ever made into animation. And my compliments to both Justin Roiland and Ian Cordellini for voicing him. As in this episode, I'm going to analyze all the information given about him throughout the series to better understand Rick Sanchez in his journey from an average scientist on Earth to the godlike interdimensional scientist he has ultimately become. Now, without further ado, let's dive in. Richard Daniel Sanchez was born on Earth, in the, on the United States specifically, in 1944, in Dimension C-137, and while much about his early life is unknown, all that we know is the fact that it's implied that he had quite a horrible relationship with his father, and a cold and distant relationship with his mother, and with his other siblings. But eventually, he managed to graduate and became a scientist. He met a woman named Diane, who they both married in their thirties, and together had a daughter, Beth Sanchez, in 1980. His life pre seemed pretty normal and happy at first. However, in one fateful day in 1984, his entire life has officially fallen apart, as while Rick struggled to invent teleportation, he was visited by none other than Rick Prime, an alternate evil version of him who tried to coax him to build the portal travel. However, when Rick C-137 refused, Prime officially detonated a neutrino bomb that killed his original Diane and Beth, resulting in C-137 having his entire life destroyed. For the next 10 years, he remained completely broken and lonely man, but he eventually managed to build the interdimensional portal gun, and by 1994, he officially started his journey across the multiverse. And for 20 years, he spent trying to find and kill Rick Prime to avenge his original family, killing various versions of himself in the process. And when that proved to be fruitless, he joined in with Bar Person, who will become eventually his best friend, in fighting against the Galactic Federation, an intergalactic oppressive government that aims to subjugate the entire universe, and it's even implied that Rick became part of the Vindicators, a group of freedom fighters, but eventually he abandoned the fight as well when that too became fruitless, and he teamed up with various versions of himself to form the Citadel of Riggs, originally meant to be a safe haven for all the Riggs across the multiverse, that too turned into a nightmare when the Council of Riggs took power, and in other words, they created a government in order to hide from the government, which Rick C-137 found very hypocritical and officially decided to leave, and the council deemed Rick a criminal as well. Eventually, by 1997, he, or better yet all the other, most of the other versions of Rick, had become grandfathers when, when Beth was impregnated in high school by Jerry Smith and gave birth to Summer Smith, and again in 2000 when she gave birth to Morty. And finally, by 2014, after he supposedly missed from his daughter's life for 20 years, Rick officially arrived in, into the Rick Prime's reality, waiting, impersonating him and waiting for him to come so he can kill him. But there, the unexpected ultimately happened. He befriended and came to have a bond to Morty Smith. Better yet, Rick Prime's <coughs> Morty, which became ironic given the fact that he is the grandson of his own arch nemesis. But eventually, Rick and Morty together went through various adventures across the multiverse, and he even destroyed Rick Prime's reality but through Cronenbergs when, uh, after he tried to make a love potion for Morty. And with this, they both went to Dimension D99 when they replaced their dead counterparts and impersonated them for the rest of the series. And it was only a matter of time before he came into conflict with the Galactic Federation and the Council of Riggs again. But thankfully, Rick managed to defeat both of these factions once and for all. By collapsing both of these governments, he managed to save himself, the Earth, his family, and the entire galaxy. And at the same time, he finally got Beth to divorce from Jerry, in order to <laughs> free her from what she, he perceives to be an unhappy marriage. And eventually, he came to clone Beth in order for her to find out what she wants to do with her life. And as with one version of Beth remained to be the Beth that we seen throughout the series, on another version, on now Space Beth, went on with her life. And eventually, Rick came to have some sort of a love and hate relationship with the US government, specifically with the US president, as they, while they both were enemies, but they also became occasional allies. 
But eventually, they come in conflict with none other than Evil Morty, an alternate evil version of his grandson, who was the mastermind behind Evil Rick's crimes, and who managed to take over the rebuilt citadel and run it as a dictator, only in exchange for Morty to break the central final curve, so he can reach a universe where Rick Sanchez is not the smartest man alive, and even try to coax Morty Prime to join him. Of course, that has ultimately failed, but at the end of the day, Evil Morty succeeded in his primary goal, as he managed to escape to a new universe outside the curve, while Rick and Morty managed to survive as well and return back on Earth. But this event ultimately allowed Rick Prime to return back to the multiverse, and Rick restarted his search for him. But now, before I go any further, we all should stop and ask ourselves. Is Rick Sanchez good or evil? Because the reason why I'm asking this is why it's undeniable that he is the protagonist of the story. He has committed a lot of horrible and heinous crimes throughout his life. He's confined and recommitted at least 7 million crimes and offenses throughout the multiverse. He destroyed at least two versions of Earth. First time with the Cronenbergs and the second time with Mr. Frandos. Not to mention that he is completely toxic and abusive to everybody, especially to Morty. However, Rick is not entirely without redeeming qualities, as he does love Morty despite being the grandson of his arch nemesis. He does care about Beth, and the reason why he cloned her is to help her with who she wants to be in life. Not to mention that, she accept that he accepted her and Jerry coming back together. And he does care about Summer. And yes, he cares a bit about Jerry as well. Not to mention that he also cares about his friends, such as Burr Person and Mr. Poopy Butthole. Not to mention that his primary motivation in life is to avenge his original Diane and Beth, as well as to avoid himself becoming like Rick Prime, similar to how Morty tries to avoid himself to become like Evil Morty. And at the end of the day, the answer is still technically both. Rick Sanchez is both good and evil at the same time, and at the end he managed to find and kill Rick Prime once and for all, and along, alongside with Morty Smith and Evil Morty, and finally managed to avenge the deceased, his original deceased family. However, even afterwards Rick has become pretty much empty, as now he has no main goal left in life, and this left him completely depressed and sad. Now, however, his very life they going on into adventures with Morty is finally the one thing that will actually make became his new life goal. So in the end, who is Rick Sanchez? He's nothing more but a simple man who got thrown into a life of chaos and against his will. A man that will ultimately transcend all known limitations and become nothing short of a scientific god. A man that will do anything in order to protect and avenge his loved ones, even against other versions of himself. And thus, a man that could easily be called as one of the most iconic cartoon characters ever created. Thanks for watching everybody. Please don't forget to give a like and subscribe and have a nice day you want to come here because i don't respect therapy because i'm a scientist because i invent transform create and destroy for a living and when i don't like something about the world i change it and i don't think going to a rented office in a strip mall to listen to some agent of averageness explain which words mean which feelings has ever helped anyone do anything i think it's helped a lot of people get comfortable and stop panicking which is a state of mind we value in the animals we eat but not something i want for myself i'm not a cow i'm a pickle when I feel like it, so you asked.